Okay, in this fifth vid video for final authority, I'm going to analyze each of the seven statements that the vast majority of Christians will agree that they are individually are true. To quickly, I'll just run through them real fast. And this is an area of agreement. The Bible is a final authority for all matters of faith and practice. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The scripture is inerrant. And Jesus Christ is called the Word of God. Jesus Christ is perfect and without error today. The Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, is of the nation of Israel. And number seven, Satan is the first being to cast doubt on what God says. Now, liberals or modernists may debate the issue, but they are their own final authority, so it really doesn't matter. So we're going to look at what conservatives or evangelicals, or fundamentalists would agree to be true. <clears throat> so we're going to analyze the first three. I'm just going to look at the first three in this video. And, and I'll, if you would write any Christian college, the vast majority of them somewhere on their website will have a statement of faith or a covenant of faith. Here happens, this will be the one I'm going to use as an example. It's a school that I attended for a couple of years. And on number one, which I'll put on the screen, uh, they write, We believe in the Holy Scriptures, accepting fully the writings of the Old and New Testaments as the very Word of God, verbally inspired in all parts, and therefore wholly without error, as originally given of God, altogether sufficient in themselves, <clears throat> as our only infallible rule of faith and practice. Uh, they do have a typo on here. Second Peter 2.21 should be 1.21. Okay, but what they did is they combined the, th the first three of the statements that I have given to be a place of agreement. Now let's analyze those uh, statements and read them slowly and come through them again. The Bible is the final authority for all matters of faith and practice. What does that mean? Well, they're saying that the Bible is the determining issue in life. It determines good and evil, right and wrong, for all matters of faith and practice. Well, okay, the Bible, the, the. Uh, it is the only definite article in English. This is the most commonly used word in English, accounting for approximately 7% of the words in use. Uh, the book, the Bible, refers to a specific book whose identity is known or obvious to the listener. It has a markedly different meaning <coughs> from a Bible or a book, which uses an indefinite article which does not specify which book is to be given. Okay, if you tell uh, an individual, go to the car, you're referring to a specific car. If you say to somebody, pick up the ball, you're referring to a specific ball. Stand by the tree, you're referring to a specific tree. Okay, the Bible. Is, is, the Bible is. That means present tense. It's not was. The Bible is signifies present tense. Therefore, the statement, if a person means what they say and say what they mean, it means that there is one specific book that is available in print today to be the final authority for all matters of faith and practice. And that one book is inspired, given by inspiration. Okay, it's found in 2 Timothy 2, 16 and 17. But I, I find it interesting, just as in this statement of faith, uh, they just use 2 Timothy 3.16. I hope I said 3.15 through 17. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. They just use 16. 
I would use 15 through 17. I have two other articles of faith where I just copied a certain pertinent portion of their faith. One is Moody Bible Institute Doctrinal Statement, and you can get online on their website and find the same thing I found. And the other one is Pensacola Christian College. This one's down in Florida. Okay, in the Moody Bible Institute Articles of Faith, they say the Bible, including both the Old and New Testaments, is a divine revelation, the original autographs of which were verbally inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so is. The Bible is. That's present tense. It is given by inspiration of God. Now, in 2 Timothy <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 16, is the verse that's almost always used. You'll find this is common. And it reads thusly, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, the sentence keeps going into the next verse that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now, the reason why I would throw in verse 15, because that within the context gives the definition, the Bible definition of the word scripture. Now, that's very significant. Okay, and so in verse 15, Paul said, and that from a child, referring to Timothy, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So Timothy had the scriptures as a child. So that would verify the word is the Bible is, it's a book you can get in your hands to be your final authority for all matters of faith and practice. That's what Timothy had, the scriptures, the scriptures. Now, I'm going to come back to that, and let's go back and analyze this statement in this covenant of faith. In this one that I put on the screen, I'm, I circled Five little words. In these five little words is some poison that's put in the rat food. Uh, you see, rat poison, if you look at the ingredients of rat poison, it's 99.95% nutritious. The 0.05% is the poison. Okay, this, in this a statement of faith, I've circled the poison that nullifies the entire statement. Okay, as originally given of God. Okay, so when was it originally given? Well, Genesis, uh, maybe... Uh, those men kept records of that, and then Moses edited them, but Job is usually referred to as the oldest Bible, the closest one to the flood of Noah's day. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, then somewhere later, Joshua, and later, Judges, and later, Ruth. So, in this statement of faith, what they're saying is the only thing that is inspired and without error is as originally as originally given of God. Well, okay, that brings up several questions we need to ask. Okay, is the final authority as originally given of God, available today? No. Has divine inspiration of the final authority as originally given of God available today? No. Uh, what evidence is available today to support said phrase in question? 
nothing but copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. Uh, the only evidence that that's available is copies of copies of copies of copies. Is not this statement of faith implying the copies of the scriptures as originally given of God that are available today are not inspired? Now, it, whoever put this together, if they really thought it through, and if they were honest on this thing, they should say, to be truthful, totally truthful, they should say, <clears throat> the scholar simply thinks what are the scriptures, because they really don't have any true original evidence to verify. So an honest revision of this would read, <sighs> an admission that the scriptures as originally given of God are not available today. Therefore, they will proclaim their opinion of what they think might be the inspired Words of God. That's if they're honest. Now let's go back to 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given, present tense. Okay, what does the word scripture mean to the scholar? He means as originally given of God. That's his personal opinion. That's his private interpretation. Verse 15 of 2 Timothy, Timothy had the Holy Scriptures. It was available to him, and that's what made him wise unto salvation through faith. Did Timothy have an original copy, the original of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. No, he did not. Did he have the original Job? No, no, no. Timothy had copies of copies of copies of copies that God had the Levites preserve. And Paul called those copies that were available the scriptures. They were inspired they're without error. Now, in the Moody Bible Institute doctrinal statement, I've circled, put it on the video there, the original autographs. Again, the same flaw which nullifies the statement. Okay, in the Pensacola Christian College, and I'm not saying these are bad schools. You can learn some good things at these schools if God leads you there. But in this statement, okay, in the Christian College of Pensacola, we believe the Bible is the verbally inspired and infallible authoritative word of God. Amen. And that God gave the words of Scripture by inspiration without error in the original autographs. Nullified it. That nullified it. Now, they know, somebody who put this together knows it nullified it, but they want to uh, sort of, kind of, add to this idea. They say, we believe that God has kept that promise of preserving his infallible word in the traditional... Hebrew and Greek manuscripts, and that the authorized version is an accurate English translation of the preserved Word of God. They don't believe it's without error. Not that's available to them. And below, they really encourage you because they say our practice is to use only the authorized version in the pulpit and in the classroom instru instruction. 
We believe that Textus Receptus is a superior text and it is used for Greek instruction. So my question is that Textus Receptus, which is a copy of a copy of a copy, is that given by inspiration of God and without error? It's a question to be answered. In my heart, the Bible is the final authority for all matters of faith and practice. And the scripture is given by inspiration of God. And the scripture is inerrant. I'm thankful that it's available today. But we're going to keep going down this little path and look at number four, five, and six. And then put them together, take those six ingredients and put, to, put them together and see what kind of bread is going to come out of the oven.